We grow when we give. We grow when we give. We grow when we give. Nosotros crecemos cuando damos. We grow when we give. 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 Welcome to ROG, Return on Generosity, a podcast celebrating generosity at work. Not financial giving, giving valuable time, alternative perspectives, and genuine collaboration. And I offer you feedback. Those five words tend to trigger fear in most of us. In this episode of Building Bridges, Coaching Tips for Generous Leaders, we're going to focus on why do we feel the fear How can we open the door to enable us to offer people feedback? When we walk through the door, how can we provide effective feedback? And how can we receive feedback? So why do we feel the fear? It's important to acknowledge that our brains are hardwired to give emotions the upper hand. See, when something happens, our primary senses go through the spinal cord and then the limbic system, which is where emotions happen before hitting our frontal lobe, which is where we have rational, logical thought. So we are likely going to feel first. We're going to focus on emotional intelligence in episode 101, but for the purpose of our conversation today on feedback, what's important to acknowledge here is that feedback triggers fear, and fear either makes us want to fight or flight. So we want to either defend or run away and avoid. How can we make sure that the door is open so that we can create opportunities to provide people with this gift that we call feedback. Well, in episode 73, during the Women's History Month series, Karen Bennett shared her strategy with us. She said that for the people that she works with, she asks them this question. If I see or recognize something that could be a career inhibitor for you, would you want me to make you aware? Now, of course, most people are gonna say, yes, please. But by doing that, what she's saying is, I will likely observe something that would be useful for you to know. Do I have your permission in advance to provide you with that insight? So it creates the expectation that she's going to offer them feedback. And in turn, she can request to receive the same kind of feedback. So once we keep that door open, creating the normality and the regularity and the expectation of offering feedback, how do we give feedback? effective feedback. Well, the Center for Creative Leadership, CCL, has a feedback model that I really love, SBI, Situation Behavior Impact. The situation is a reminder of a point in time in the not too distant past that something happened. The behavior, which is the part that most of us get wildly wrong, is a specific behavior that that the person did or something that they said. So unlike saying something like, you seem really off today, you're not yourself, you don't really seem to have your foot on the gas, or I just really need you to be more strategic. All of those things are useless feedback because they don't tell us anything. But if I could think about a behavior that has caused me to think that this person needs to be more strategic or hasn't been themselves lately, that could be helpful. So situation, behavior, being specific, and the impact that that behavior had on the situation or how it made me feel. So here's an example. Remember the meeting that we had on Monday at one o'clock with the senior leadership team we were preparing for the board meeting? When they asked you to provide the reason for the decline in the profitability of XYZ, you said the economy is affecting everything. The response didn't answer their question and I felt like we weren't prepared thoroughly to anticipate that question, nor did we provide a clear reason for the decline. See, S, the situation, the Monday morning meeting, Monday afternoon meeting, the behavior, I was clear and specific. I even quoted them. And then the impact that I think that it had on the meeting. Nobody can argue with you about how you feel or what you think the impact was. The same exact model can be used for positive feedback because sometimes we just take the lazy route and we say, good job or way to go today. What would be more helpful is if you said something like, remember the meeting that we had at one o'clock on Monday with the senior leadership team to prepare for the board meeting? Before you presented slide five, the one with the graphs and the numbers, you warned them that the next slide was gonna have a lot of data and you told them where to look. And then when you went to slide five, you had that area highlighted in red. 
that helped to show the necessary information and background while focusing us on the things that really matter. S-B-I. So this week, when you're offering people the generosity of your feedback, be prepared. Think it through. What's an example of a situation that happened recently that you think would be an example that would be worth sharing with the individual? Give them the situation. Helpfully be clear about what the behavior was or wasn't, and then what the impact was on you, the situation, or the outcome. Please practice that this week in your generous leadership. Join us next week with Steve Drum. Until then, stay generous, everyone. Thanks for listening to ROG, Return on Generosity podcast. Please help us grow by subscribing and reviewing us on your favorite podcast player. And for more information, visit bridgebetween.com. We grow when we give. We grow when we give. We grow when we give.